hi guys, Luton here, and so this is my video for 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully the sound and everything is going to be okay, if not I'll dub over it later. But basically, uh, last time we did a walk for 50,000 subscribers, and this time I've come to here, which is Maiden Castle in Dorset in England. It is one of the largest Iron Age hill forts in Europe. I'm going to read you a little spiel here. So Maiden Castle in Dorset is the largest and most complex Iron Age hill fort in Britain. Its vast multiple ramparts enclose an area the size of nearly 50 football pitches. It was built entirely by hand and the site was home to several hundred people in the Iron Age in 80 BC to AD 43. Unusually for sites of this kind it has a history of use from its origins as a Neolithic enclosure over 6,000 years ago uh, right through to many centuries of modification during the Iron Age to the building of a Romano British temple here. For all of its many uses across the ages, it stands as one of the most impressive Iron Age structures in Europe. And this place is absolutely massive. We're going to be taking a look around today and I'll be showing you all the way around this site. Thanks guys, see you then. At first as an Iron Age fort, it was home to a small self-sufficient community, but in the following 400 years it became the pre-eminent settlement in southern Dorset. Excavations have discovered early Iron Age post holes in square arrangements within the hill fort. These are thought to have been above ground stores used for keeping grain produced in the surrounding fields, perhaps to sustain the workforce occupied in building the huge ramparts. At the height of its occupation, the fort was densely populated, with the community involved in activities such as textile production and even metal working. In the Middle Iron Age, the layout of the interior of the hill fort was reorganised. This reorganisation suggests that some control existed over social life within the fort. Later in the Iron Age, this organised system broke down. There was increasing trade with the continent, and specialised industries such as the metal working were becoming very important. War graves have been found at the site, evidence of a Roman attack on the hill fort following their invasion of Britain in AD 43. The second legion Augusta under their leader Vespasian is indeed known to have led a campaign through this part of southern England. However, later analysis of the graves showed them to contain not just individuals injured in battles, but also those buried with possessions, suggesting the burials were not just hasty war graves. Some individuals were found though with Roman arrowheads still embedded in their skulls and spines. Towards the end of the settlement though, within a few decades of the arrival of the Romans, the hill fort was abandoned. The Romans established the town of Dorchester very nearby in the late 4th century, however a temple complex was built on the hill. At this time a fusion of native British and classical Roman religion was becoming popular and it is common to find shrines located in remote rural locations. The abandoned hill fort provided an ideal setting for this new pagan religion. Now on the last trip at 50k uh, I was accompanied by my brother and that was a fantastic hike we had um, but this time he wasn't available to come and join us on this day so my parents are here instead and uh, my dad as usual at pretty much every uh, historical place we visited throughout my entire childhood has his own take on the reasons as to why this was a settlement uh, trying to discern sometimes from my dad the, the, the fine line between truth and absolute nonsense was always a difficult thing so I thought I'd share this with you. That is uh, going to explain the logistical and uh, social reasons why Maiden Castle was primarily chosen as a, uh, a community location. Well, in conclusion, it's quite apparent from the position here that one of the major reasons it was chosen as such an important site of uh, social cohesion was its proximity to Dorchester which would have had all the local amenities. There's a railway not too far away and the main Roman route to London. So obviously it was ideal 
as, as one of the early Bronze Age settlements. In the early Neolithic period, the hilltop was cleared of woodland and an oval enclosure of two segmented ditches was built on the eastern plateau. This causewayed enclosure, so called because of the gaps between the ditches, was one of the earliest types of monuments in Britain. Right, so one of the major features of this site is its defensive capability, and this is way back in the Iron Age. So what would have happened is these big ramparts that you see behind me, these were all dug out by hand, and what you would have had is a palisade wall going around the outside. So that is a, a loads of logs sharpened, stuck all the way around the outside, and that would have acted as a, a defense mechanism. But part of the defense of it is just the fact that you've got to run up these things to actually get to the wall itself. So I'm going to try and demonstrate just how difficult it is to run up these things by having a go now and you'll see just how exhausting it is imagine trying to do that when you're under fire from arrows or rocks and you're you know carrying armor sword and shield up there at the same time a part of it is just depleting you just exhausting you as you're trying to get up there so i'm going to give it a go right now Right guys, so that was obviously quite tiring. I wouldn't say I was the exactly fittest person, but even if you are a full on warrior with a sword and a shield and you're trying to run up there, you can see that slipping back down it, of course it wouldn't have always had grass there, it would have had the white uh, stone underneath, but exhausting, so difficult to come up there. And if you're being battled as you're coming up there, trying to defend yourself and come up there at the same time, you've got no chance whatsoever. So guys, I hope this has been an interesting overview today. The site is absolutely amazing. And if you're ever in the southwest of the UK, I would totally recommend you go and check this place out. Um, it is just astonishing to walk around the site and just take in the sheer scale of it. And I want to say a massive thanks to all of you who have supported me for such a long time now. It's been a real effort getting to 100,000 subscribers. It has been a big, if not the biggest goal that I have really set myself for YouTube. So this is a huge deal. Thanks so much to all of you who have enjoyed my content, commented, subscribed, and generally stayed involved with the channel, guys. It means a massive deal to me, and I hope that we can continue to build on that going forward. Obviously, my next goal currently right now is my Patreon project. It's been going very well, and hopefully that will continue to step forward and forward until we perhaps get to a point where I am able to work full time on the channel. But for now, guys, I want to say a massive thank you, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.